Welcome to Home Care Hot Seats with Kelly and Nicole, the exclusive podcast for home care owners by home care owners. I'm Kelly. And I'm Nicole, two home care owners who live and breathe the challenges and triumphs of the industry every day. Join us as we dive into the latest happenings, innovative strategies, and the raw truth of balancing business with everyday life. Whether you're a seasoned owner, a new entrepreneur, or just curious about the world of home care, you're in the right place. So, today, I am, I'm struggling. Yes. So, I'm thinking like, maybe we should talk a little bit about the struggle. I think that's a great um, topic. And I mean, while you're in the struggle is probably the best time to talk about the struggle, but at the same time, the emotion of it. So I, do you need to get that? Your phone is ringing off the hook. It's the main office number. I'm good. Okay. I don't, I haven't answered a phone here in years. I can't, I have phone trauma, which again, struggle. I'm sure home care owners can, can completely understand <laughs> Any time that phone rings, my stomach knots up and I just, yeah. I get so scared and nervous. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I talking struggle. It's a struggle for me. I hate answering my business line, but I think like, yeah. because of the purpose of this podcast, I think that while everybody wants to hear all the like woo woo, good, great things that come from being a business owner, I think it's important to talk about the struggle and there's no better time to talk about the struggle than when you're going through it. Because when you're on the other side of it, like when you're in it, you're like, God, how am I going to get through this? What does the end of this look like? And then when you're at the end, you're like, God, I'm such a drama queen. I made such a big deal about this and it really wasn't that big of a deal. I'm very reactionary. My New Year's resolution every year is to be less reactionary. I fail miserably every year. But whenever something That's happens, true. because I try to control and plan everything, when something happens that I was not planning or I had not thought of a scenario for, it's like, oh my God, this is literally the end of the world. Everything is going to go horrible from here. And I just, I just, like totally yeah. mind myself. Sorry, I said the F word. My bad. <laughs> We're trying not to do that. <laughs> Just we'll we'll beat that out later. Sorry guys. But yeah, no, oh I God. think struggle is struggle is something that us home care owners and any business owner really deals with on a regular basis. So I say for all of the true crime loving podcasts, dark entity people out there that are listening to this we should jump right into the struggle. So what's your struggle, yeah. Kelly? Okay. So my struggle is the elusive balance. Um, and I think that most people can probably relate to the balance, right, of owning a business and managing a family simultaneously, mm -hmm. both at the same, t you know, like trying to do both well. Um, I Listener, just FYI, this is not a, we have figured it out kind of a <laughs> episode. No, if you came here thinking um, that, sorry, we're, that, that ain't us. You came for answers. No, no. <laughs> Think again. Um, if you came to commiserate. We're here for welcome. it. Welcome. Yes. You're among friends. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like after seven years in business, I should have a better grasp on the flow, right? And you best laid plans. I knew that this month was going to be a slower month for home care. You know, statistically, we mm -hmm. kind of understand the yep. ebbs and flows. And so I purposefully then front loaded my year with some other projects that I needed to do. And I took a lot of December off for the family. Like, I worked really hard. That was my goal. And that went great. So, you know, anytime that one side gets more of you, the other side is not. So I gave more to my, to the family, right. For end of the year. So business didn't get me as much. It was going to flip flop. Well, best laid plans. Um, I mean, I am drowning in the 
life of it all. Our home manager nanny, home manager is just a fancy word that we decided to use for our nanny, um, put in her notice, which is life, right? But she's been with us for two years. And when she, when I say she put in her notice, like she put in 30 days from that day. Wow. Like, see ya. Um, and I mean, it's great for her. She's going back home. You know, she's from the North, so it's not like she's moving on to a different family because she hates our guts, but it's still like she, you know, does a lot. And I've got three kids under 11 and they're busy and soccer season starts up here soon. And um, I real, just realized that none of them had a scheduled dentist appointment and one's got a hurt tooth. James needs to have his glasses repaired, so I need an eye doctor appointment. Um, I've got one that is not doing well in school, so got that fun little um, email from the school. I don't have an I. Uh, um, I don't even know what. I, I don't think it's an IEP meeting. I think it's like a pre something meeting for. I don't. All things, all the things. Mm. And on top of all the things that I'm trying to do for work, right? And not even like little things, like big things that, big projects that- Yeah, you got a lot of big things going on right now. I do. And and I love those, you know, I love those things because all of them are focused on pouring into our home care community. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, it's not like new marketing campaigns for the business or anything like that. It's like, you know, some- some things to really help our home care owners to succeed this year. And, oh, you know, it's just like <laughs> right now, if I'm being really honest, can, can I be honest? Please do. Can I be honest? All I want to do is Netflix and chill. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm in that paralysis. So if you have ever been there and you were looking at Nicole and I like we have it all together. Welcome to the hot mess podcast. Hot mess. I'm so hot glad seat. to have you. Um, so yeah. when your and that is when your time gets. Well, Cause we've talked about this. We talked about this when we were in Atlanta together, there's no way to separate work and home. And home, like the two just no, and I, I think like, that people, yeah. And if you try to do that, then that's really probably if I could give you any advice, if you try to do them separately, you are a whole being, you're a whole mm -hmm. person, and it will overlap. And so, if if you don't tr realize how you can integrate the two, or if you don't try to, then, uh, then I think that's probably where you are going to struggle even more. I at least feel like I have come to grips with the fact that like it is a, an ebb and a flow and it comes mm -hmm. together and like, it is not from eight to five, I am at work. And you know, like that's just not, that's not life as a business owner. Yeah, absolutely not. So how do you, I mean, like the thing is like, there's all how do I struggles. handle it? Yeah, like what what's your step? Because like I know what my my step is. Um, I Netflix and chill. You just like take a day, take two days, like just no. step away. It like, totally depends. I mean, sometimes like when it does get to be so much. I mean, I, so I can typically handle a lot on my plate, mm -hmm. you know. And I would say that most business owners, most entrepreneurs, like we're probably like that. We're you know really good at delegating. We can handle a lot. So it, it's that one little extra thing that kind of tips the scale and makes everything kind of go haywire. Um, I mean, it really kind of depends. I do see the value in stepping back to get perspective. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I continue on to just forge ahead and, you know, cross things off of a list, then all I'm doing really is digging myself in a deeper hole because the reality is some things at this point are going to need to wait. 
So, yeah. you know, like there's just, n- there's not enough time in the day. If I were to com- like p- completely plan out what the next few days look like, like there's just not, it's not like there's magical extra time that's just going to yeah. happen. So where do you find, uh, where do you find your support system? Cause, and we've talked about this, like one of the things that we kind of commiserate on together is that we are solo entrepreneurs. We started these businesses alone. Um, we don't have a spouse that's in the industry with us. Our spouses are both extremely busy in their work. So where or how do you find that support? What does that look like for you? I mean, honestly, for me, that's you in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, I mean, because not everybody can understand that struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that finding the home care owner community was probably the best thing that happened for me when it comes to that. Because, I mean... Honestly, I think even if you're not an independent, even if you are a franchise owner, the likelihood that you are that deeply connected to your franchise, you know, circle as a whole is probably pretty slim. Right. So there is, it is, it is lonely. It's very lonely and you are making these decisions every day and you're trying to tell yourself that like, it's the right thing. It's the, you know, but there comes a point where... (laughs) Like, is this the right thing? Um, Well, it's hard too because at the end of the day, yeah, at the end of the day, you can't, I mean, like I can go home and I can be like, oh my God, it was the worst day ever. Like all of these things happen. And my husband will supportively sit and listen. Sure. But it's just like his job. Like he'll come home and complain about his job. I legitimately, honestly, I don't even really know what my husband does. I mean, I know he goes to work every day. I know the company he works for, but, and we sit and we like talk about all of the, the like shit things that happened in our day and then the good things and like the, th- the funny things that made us laugh. But I, I don't know day to day, like intricate details of what his job is, what he does. And he doesn't know the intricate pieces of my job and what I do every day. So it's like, it, it almost feels like you're talking about it on a superficial level and Maybe superficial isn't the right yeah. word, but you're talking about something that's so much a part of you to somebody who doesn't fully understand kind of what we're going through in a day. And it's hard. And that's, that is a piece that I think of when, like, if there's anything that I wish I had in this business, it is somebody like a partner that really kind of understands yeah. um, and is kind of going through all of the, the turmoil with me, I guess. And it makes it hard when it's yourself. Like you literally only have yourself to rely on, even though you might have a great support system, there's nobody to split that workload with. There's nobody to split that stress load with. It's hard. Um, yeah. I mean, even with the best supportive spouses, I think it's, it's freaking hard. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that um, you're right. I mean, it, it's not that the conversations are superficial necessarily, but they're surface level because, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you don't understand the intricacies of of the job, then it is hard to relate on a deeper level with it. I think the other thing is that, you, you know, we talk about these businesses that we have created and uh, in this industry, especially, I think when you look at the industries that are very altruistic, um, you don't come into this to solely make money Mm -hmm. um, because there's a hell of a lot of better ways that you could make money. So, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, If you have come into this because you're, this is a quick paycheck, you know, that is not the best idea. Play the lotto Um, instead. Right. I mean, there are other options out there. So, I think when you do have a a business in an industry that is so, I want to, I want to do something for the betterment of people. I want to make an impact. I want to, you know, do be more than just me. I mean, you've birthed this thing that is you. I mean, it is, it, it's just like another child. Mm -hmm. And so it, it matters and it means something. And when it, 
does well, you are proud and excited. And when it does fails, it is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so to be so emotionally involved in something is tough. Yeah. Um, and we can say all day long that we don't get emotionally involved in the cases. And truly, I mean, there's, I don't know all of our cases in and out, but it doesn't take much to pull it, you mm -hmm. know, your heart string, especially when, you know, our why behind, you know, going into this industry is so connected to the people. So you've got, you know, that emotional pull, you've got that mental pull. I mean, it's just a lot. Yeah. Um, and I can see the way they, that this industry has both positively and negatively affected my relationships with my kids and with my husband. Um, for sure. you know, as much as it has provided me with, um, you know, a, a, a good lifestyle and it's been the catalyst for me to be able to venture out and start other businesses. Um, it's still at the end of the day, like the home care piece is the, the baby that I birthed that kind of got me to all these other things. And it's been able to allow me a lot of really present moments with my family. Um, my kids are all older. Kelly has young kids, um, but I have four older kids. My oldest is 22 and my youngest is 15. Um, and so we've done some really cool family vacations. We've been able to provide kid, our kids with opportunities that um, we're very fortunate that we've been able to do those things for our kids. Um, but it's definitely taken a toll uh, and kind of put some relationships. Like my daughter, I remember her saying, I was, I was home, home, you know, I'm physically home, but I was doing a schedule and she was talking to me and she's like, mom, are you working? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm working. And she was like, can't you just put your computer up for a minute? And I was like, no, Avery, I can't put my computer up for a minute because if I don't finish this, people don't get seen, which means that we go without being able to bill for these hours and we don't have revenue coming in and people aren't getting paid. So no, I need this next hour, even though I'm home to be able to finish the schedule, like just give me an hour. And she was like, okay, fine. And I could tell it was like just one more time where I wasn't able to be present and be yeah. there and in the moment when she needed me to be. And so it's like, yes, like you have these really high highs and there's all these great things that, you know, being a business owner has provided, but that, you know, we always focus on as we have all kinds of parental guilt anyways, even in the best of scenarios. But in that scenario, you're like, that's what you focus on for the next six months. I'm a horrible parent. I'm the worst mom in the world because I couldn't take that hour that she wanted right. to have a conversation with me and, and just be present for that. And it sucks. And I think there's so many agency owners that feel that and think that yes. there's some golden egg balance where it's five o'clock and we're just going to shut the doors and turn the phones off. And we, you know, we being a Medicaid agency, we don't do overnight care because our Medicaid services don't pay for times where we're not providing that direct hands-on care. So we've always had like a, a first shift model. Like we work from like 8 a.m. to 6, 7 p.m. at night. There are a lot of agency owners that work 24 seven. Um, we don't. And, um, I've had people say, oh, that'd be so great at six o'clock. Like you just close the office and you go home. No, no, you don't do you, that is the last thing that happens because at six o'clock, what happens is daily operation stops. Right. So from 6 PM till eight, nine, 10, 11 PM, you're doing all those things that you didn't get to do during the day. And I feel bad for people that have 24 seven agencies because where's that downtime? Like I can't yeah. imagine where they find that downtime. So as, as much positive as we do in this agency, I think as owners, we always tend to carry not just some guilt of 
you know, making sure that we're doing everything for everybody else, but there's also that parental guilt that comes with it and it sucks. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, and, and you and I too are, are fortunate. We've put some systems and processes in place to where Mm -hmm. we're not in the daily operations of our home care businesses. And that's awesome. But we're, I think that what I want you to hear listener is that we're still in it. I mean, Mm -hmm. even though we may not be in the daily operations of home care, um, well, I mean, we both still are, we're still business other, owners. Right. And we've created other endeavors. And because at the end of the day, you know, our why comes back to impact. You know, we mm-hmm. want to see a difference. And I think that there's positive to that. And that's what I try to tell myself. You know, our kids get to see us doing that. Yeah. You know, they get to see that happening. And I think there's a lot of value to that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, there's just not a magic answer to any of this. And that Mm -hmm. makes it hard. Um, you know, the guilt, the mom guilt, um, Mm -hmm. granted, I know that not everybody listening is a, is a mom and probably not everyone listening is a parent, but there, it's something different to balance the being a mom and, um, running a business Mm -hmm. and that, that is tough. And I see other home care owners struggling with that too. I I just happened to um, shout out Misty Carver. I happened to be looking at your Facebook earlier and she's got little little. post. Yeah. Little babies. We had her and I had a meeting set up the other day on zoom and she's like, I'm going to be an hour late. I forgot to take a sippy cup to daycare. So I have to run a sippy cup back to daycare. And I was like, Oh, those days. Oh yeah. And we've got owners that just had babies. Um, we have some that like, you know, in, in, in our masterminds getting ready to have another baby, I think in May. And I just think back, like, there's no way. Is that, is that, um, is that like public knowledge? I don't know. We'll have to edit that out if it's not. <laughs> well, so yeah. We I mean, it's so who are getting ready to have babies like in this new year. Yeah. And I think back to, you know, when I started my business, it, my son, my youngest was a year. Mm-hmm. So step back for a second with me, listener. And um, I was a stay at home mom for five years when we found out we were pregnant with number three. I had a two year old <laughs> and a nine month old. Mm. Okay. No, a three year old and a nine month old. Excuse me. So when Isaac was born, I had a three-year-old and an 18-month-old and a newborn. Like, and that's when I was like, I'm going back to work. I want to go back to work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Not only am I going back to work, I'm going to start a business. Yeah. I'm just not going to like do an eight to five. I'm going to open and do it all myself because I, you know, just a glut for punishment. Because that makes a lot of sense. Yes. You know? But so I had the fortune to be home with my kids during that time, which was great. Isaac was a year old. We put him in daycare and that's when I started the business. I cannot imagine doing this with little littles, with like babies Mm -hmm. um, again, because of how difficult it was. And because my husband works full time and is a physician and he has an extremely demanding career uh, I needed to be the, the their parent still. Mm-hmm. And so the first few years of my business, I had to put strong boundaries around what I could and could not do. And that was hard. Well, and you've because- talked too about limiting what you wanted to do in the business because of that initial time period where yes. John was like getting into his career, you were coming back into the workforce, you had all these littles at home. And so you set these boundaries. Why don't you tell the listeners about that? Because like watching your business now with you growing and adding and doing, if you had done that when you start or when you initiated this business, how do you think oh it'd my be gosh, different I would... or what, what would have been the, the plan? I mean, I would have been a huge agency at this point, mm-hmm. you know, 
And and that is hard for and I think anyone listening, if you you're an owner, you're an entrepreneur, we are all about achievement. Yes. Like and and so putting a harness around achievement and saying you can only really achieve to this point when you really could to this, yeah, that is hard in so many other ways because you get to like I see other I, there's another agency that's nearby me in a, a different area but um, we opened at the same time and she is like three times the size that I am and that comparison game is hard and yeah. guys I am not a comparison person I you know for me I very much feel like I'm in my lane where I need to be um, I I fully believe in abundance over, um, you know, what's the word? Um, scarcity. It's Friday. I'm sorry. <laughs> I fully believe in abundance over scarcity. There's enough to go around. Um, so I'm not a comparison kind of a person, but to have to put a harness around what you can and cannot do and to only be able to grow to like a certain point, Oh my gosh, that's so hard. And then, you know, I, I was, what, COVID hit in 2020. So my agency was literally only three years old, just barely getting started. And I had a daycare child, a um, kindergartner, and a uh, first grader mm. that had to come home. And... I mean, it basically was like we, as a, as an owner made it, I had to make a decision like, okay, we're going to float. Whereas everyone else got to grow and got to really take advantage of that time. Yeah. I did not. I, I, we had to make the decision. Okay. For one, we're going to, we're just going to have to float. Um, my husband was working in the hospital directly with COVID patients. So the fact that he would come home to us meant that I could not go out and do assessments or be around anyone. Right. Um, and, and you know, at, for good reason, especially in the beginning, we didn't know what that was going to do to other people. And so I had a podcast that was doing really well at that time, completely had to shut that down. Um, I mean, it was tough. So, and we, and we did, we floated. <laughs> like, that's all I can say. We made it out. But I look at where we are today versus then. For one, I am so proud of where we are because um, we would have looked like a very different agency had I had the opportunity to grow as fast as I want to, uh, as I would have wanted to. Yeah. Um, but two, I don't think I would be in, I don't think I would have found my purpose now had I not well, had maybe, the restraint then. Maybe, because I was on the other side of that. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, my agency is even newer than yours. We opened in 2018 mm -hmm. and we came, I came in not one, not wanting a home care agency. I never wanted to own a home care agency. Um, for listeners out there who haven't heard that story, I started an adult day center. Um, and we did very, very minimal home care. Um, we would maybe send, I think I had two, maybe three caregivers, very PRN. Um, they would go into the homes. They'd help people get ready. They would bring them to the day program. People would spend the day in our day program. And then the home care aides would come back, take them home and maybe do some evening care. But that was it. And COVID happened. And our day, shut, our day center had to shut down. And the day center was, at the end of the day, I only wanted the day center because I knew I could do it myself. I didn't have to rely on yeah. staff. If I had to Gosh, go and- not the truth. Oh my God. That was the only thing that I wanted. I had come out of working in healthcare and doing investigations and hospice. And I didn't want to rely on anybody else because I had been seeing- all of the bad in everybody. I mean, the investigations I was doing, they were horrible things. And then in hospice, I mean, it's a completely different type of horrible. Like you come to love these people as your very own and you never think about the fact that there's a 100% mortality rate. Everybody's going to die that you're taking care of every single day. Right. And so like there's this constant heartache. And so leaving that, I wanted to just be me. I wanted to just 
take care of people in a really controlled environment and it was doing great. Like we were, we were killing it. And then COVID happened and we had to close and our only option, um, our only option was home care. You know, I had this small business loan that I had taken out to start this. I still at that time, I hadn't left my, my normal nine to five. So I was still doing both jobs and then COVID. And so I was still doing my investigative work for um, mental health and doing the day program and then COVID. So I'm like trying to transition a day program into a home care agency while doing investigations. While still working. Completely remotely. (laughs) (laughs) Because I couldn't go on site anywhere. Um, So I'm doing all these investigations over the phone and on Zoom. And you've seen what my internet capability is like. (laughs) Okay, time out, time out, time out, time out. (laughs) You You were doing, I'm sorry, you were doing investigations via... Zoom. Yes, ma'am. So my job consisted of doing investigations and also doing audits. So I was so doing did, did people have to like bring you yes. like around the, the home. Like yes, I was on it. Like we gave all of our homes that we contracted with. Um, they all were given tablets or iPads. Um, my former CEO, phenomenal woman. I have the absolute utmost respect for this woman. Shout out to Carol Mills. She's a freaking genius. Um, but she like got this grant together, got all these iPads and these tablets and started distributing them. So then when people had to have like their case managers visit them or their nurses visit them or anybody from CMH come in, come in and see them, it was on this tablet. So it's crazy. Same thing. Like you have to have your yearly recipient rights assessment. So there I was on the tablet and they would walk me from room to room. And then like, if I was questioning some, a staff or a resident that filed a complaint, it was, they'd set my tablet up and I would be face to face with the recipient. Um, and so, I mean, we were doing okay. everything. Can remote. I tell you for just a second? Did you ever, do you ever watch, um, the big bang theory? Yes. Okay. You know, when Sheldon like decides that it's too dangerous for him to go out in the world. And so he creates like a robot (laughs) Sheldon. That is what I'm envisioning right now. (laughs) Like I'm envisioning a robot, Nicole, and she is like going around and far off. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. So then I did not realize that you were still working like a nine to five as you were trying to start your day program, then COVID hits. And then you're also trying to transition your day program into home care. So, I mean, like, yeah, all of them, I would at when before, like the world shut down, like I had staff that would be in the field, you know, taking care of folks. And then I had um, one that would come in and help in the day center. Um, but I would take off strategic days and I would work here when I would, you know, use my PTO and take time off there. But then like on my lunch hour from CMH, I would go to my car and I would work on stuff in my car on my tablet in my car. And on the weekends I lived in my office on Saturdays and Sundays, or I'd get out of work and I, I had a 45 minute drive home. Um, so I would drive from my office to this office and then I would work for three, four, five hours. I would help if the day program was still going, I'd take people home. So kind of all of that. And then like the world shut down and we had to, we had to transition into home care and I had no idea what I was doing. Like none. Yeah. Yeah. I had never really any intentions of doing home care. So I never really put any time or effort into what had to be done, what, you know, specific things. We didn't have scheduling concepts. We were, we were scheduling on paper because everybody was coming to us. Like I had staff, like you're going to go pick up Mr. Jones. You're going to pick up Mrs. Smith and bring them here. And then this is what time you need to come back. Um, So it was, where you kind of had to put limits on, we were like thrown into it. And it was, yeah. it was a positive for our business. By fire. Yeah. It was like sink or swim. 
So it was, it was, there are pieces of me that are like, I really envy the fact that you got to like limit how much you expanded and how much you actually took on during that period, because I was drowning in yeah, just the, all of the uncontrolled, like all of the home care agency owners that are listening that like, haven't been fortunate, fortunate enough to figure out processes and strategy and figure out how to exit the daily operations, doing that during a literal shutdown of our entire state, our entire country, it was, I was done. I mean, I was, I had, you know, my first panic attack during that period of time. I was, Mm. I was a, freaking hot mess. And it was, it was tough. Like I had my mind made up. I was selling my business. So not that you, so that's not shocking that that's when we met. No, because, (laughs) because, you know, after, um, after COVID is when I had decided, Hey, I need to, I, I know as much as I can know, I've got Mm -hmm. to learn more. There's gotta be a better way. Like we made it through, but like, I can't keep going this way. So that's when I joined, the action leader program through home care ops. Mm -hmm. And that's the same time when you joined. So it's not shocking to me because I remember I, I so fully remember the first, um, like meeting that we all zoom Mm -hmm. that we all got on and you said, I'm out. I'm, I want to sell. Peace out. And then like, I can sell it. (laughs) Yeah. And then, um, not too long after that, she was like, by the way, I'm buying a, assisted living bottom assisted living yeah yeah Yeah. but that's not so I get that now because I didn't realize that that's how it all kind of came together for you so what's I think what's interesting about this listener is that when you know we say not to compare your chapter one to my chapter 30 Mm -hmm. okay and this is such a good example of that because if you were to come in and see Nicole and I right now, you would think that we have it all together. It was intentionally planned out this way. Like it, every step was well planned and executed. And, but the reality is that is not how it happens. And so your chapter 30 is going to look so different Mm -hmm. than your chapter one so it's just so important not to compare yourself, not, you know, not to see someone and say, oh my gosh, like, why do I not have it together when they do? Yeah. Because the reality is for one, we're at two different places, but the other part of it is that no, none of us really do, you know? No. And we've been there. And like there was a long period of time where we were like, I don't have this together. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to run a business. Like I can give great care to somebody. I can take care of somebody until they pass away and I can do it phenomenally, but I don't have a clue how to be a business owner. And that is when you become a business owner, there's so much riding on your shoulders. Um, You know, like I had rent, I had a a loan that I had taken out. I had emptied my retirement. My husband had taken money out of his retirement and like all of this was invested in the business. So I was, I I had done everything I knew how to do to make it successful. And it was failing miserably. I didn't know how to manage Mm. people. I didn't know how to do any of that. So when I found action leaders through the home care ops, I, my whole intentional goal was to fix what was broken and then sell it because I was done. I was, (laughs) I was going to continue working my nine to five job through this restructuring, through this scaling, and then sell this and continue working, doing my, uh, I was going to continue being the director of the rights office. Like I had been because I knew it. And that was literally one thing at five o'clock. I could shut it down. I could be done. Yeah. And it was not like even when I made up my mindset to do that, it wasn't like it was this easy thing. It only got harder because I had to deep dive into the things that weren't working. And when you're somebody who really takes that 
in like what you have been doing is so personal and to realize that literally everything you're doing is a hot freaking dumpster fire and nothing's working. You're just throwing things at the wall, hoping that they stick. And then you're like, okay, now I need to fix these things. And yeah, I know I need to have processes. I don't even know where to start with a process. Like what do I look at? What needs to be done? It, It was a deep dive. I had to like get out of my own head and I had to just say like, Nicole, what you're doing sucks. You've tried. (laughs) You don't know what you're doing. Like there are things that you do really well, but running a business is not one of them. So (laughs) we're going to, it is now, now, but we're going to find some people who know what the hell they're doing and they're going to give you some, some help. And so that's kind of when I joined action leaders and I was like, Oh my God, like there's so much information. Like I jumped in and I like deep dove into everything. But even that, like what I found was the people that are, you know, giving this information, Justin and Clint, they've got phenomenal advice. What I didn't realize at first is, you know, they're talking from an, a perspective of a private pay, long-term care agency owner you know, they built these wonderful, huge, profitable companies and anybody that wants to listen to them, like check them out. I, they are, you know, wealths of knowledge and so much so that like now I'm coaching with them, like Kelly and I are fully ingrained in the home care ops, but I had to take what they were teaching and figure out how that worked for my business because my business wasn't a long-term care business. It was a Medicaid business and where they had, you know, profit margins that were this big, I had slivers of a profit margin. So it was like, I jumped from one struggle to another, but it, it, to do that in this industry, I think is so incredibly important and it's not impossible. It feels like it a lot of the time. I remember feeling like this is never going to be fixed. Like I just want to like leave my keys on the desk and just walk away from it. But it absolutely for anybody that's at that point where they're struggling or they don't know what the next step is, it's, it's possible. Um, we've both been there in different capacities. Like it's possible to make this a, not just a profitable business because I mean, realistically we go into business one to, to meet a need, but we also go into business to make money. And there's a way, there's a way to do it in this industry. Um, I just had to like get out of my own way and stop thinking that I knew it all and listen to people that had already made the same mistakes I was making day in and day out. Yeah. Mm. So we've covered the elusive balance. We have covered the, the struggle. We have covered the emotions of being a home care owner, having a family. I mean, listener, we have gone through all kinds of things in this episode. Um, Nicole, if there's one thing that you would want to leave our listener with, what would it be? Hmm. I would say to leave you with one little nugget, it would be, I think probably to... For me personally, I struggled with recognizing that what I was doing wasn't working. And if you are in a place where you're consistently in a negative headspace and it's hard to find the positive and when you look at your business, you get this feeling in the pit of your stomach that's anything but positive a lot of us find ourselves there and sometimes I slide back there myself some days, but if you are at that place more than you are not, it is absolutely critical for you, for the betterment of your business, for the longevity of your business to start finding a community, start finding resources and a support group because for a long time, Kelly and I kind of fumbled through and we didn't have that. And I don't know that I would have stuck this out and taken this business and built it into what it is 
without a community of people that understood what we were doing and and legitimately wanted the best for me. They didn't view me as competition. They viewed me as another struggling right. agency owner. I think the community piece, the coaching piece, I do believe that those are the things that make or break a business, it, especially in this industry. I can't really talk to other industries industries outside of senior care, but in the senior care world, you have to have a support system. And yeah. that would be kind of what I leave listeners with is figure out who your support system is. If you need, it's Kelly and I, even if it's just listening to this podcast once a week, somebody to kind of give pointers and tips and tricks and commiserate with that you have to find out what support looks like for you and figure out who that support system is. What about yeah, you? Absolutely. Yeah, same. I mean, I think that um, living on an island for so long, you know, and, but then finding your people, um, find your people, you know, and we'll put in the show notes, our home care owners community, you know, if you don't have a home care bestie that you can go to or an accountability partner or, you know, um, the amazing thing about the home care ops community is that it is a free, um, Facebook group just for you to gain insight, to gain knowledge and support, but also just to reach out and to meet people. And so I would strongly suggest for you to join that and put yourself out there, you know, be vulnerable, be authentic, find your, your people. Um, but you know, we want to hear from you. I, I want to hear from you. Uh, cause what we have learned during this journey is that, we're not alone, but we don't talk about it. So if any of this resonated with you today, um, share this episode with a friend that you know in home care that could also benefit. Um, leave us a comment. Give us a, um, a hell yeah, <laughs> feel you there. Um, you know, any of the above, because we're all in this together. And the reality is that even though we like to say business is business is business, our business is unique and, mm -hmm. um, and it can be challenging and it can be difficult at times. So we want you to know, listener, that you're not alone. And, um, and that even like Nicole said, if, if you only have us every, um, well, once a week when you listen to our podcast, at least you've got two home care besties, um, that are that are here in your corner letting you know that you're doing an amazing job so keep at it thanks for joining us on home care hot seats with kelly and nicole we hope today's session has given you insight inspiration and a sense of community in this ever-evolving journey of home care ownership don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and share it with other fellow home care agency professionals have a topic you want us to discuss or a story to share, reach out to us and join the conversation. You'll find the links and contact info you need in the show notes below. We'll see you next time. Same time, same place. Bye for now. Bye.